African-American women spend billions every year on black hair products. Even though they only make up 10% of the American population, they buy 70% of all wigs and extensions purchased here in the United States. It's very important. They take their last dime to get their hair done. <laughs> they go hungry before they let their hair go to uh, look bad. My journey into the world of black hair begins in Oakland, California, at the Black Hair Extravaganza. When you look at her, it's like her crown. She's a queen, you know. So she she needs like extra pieces and braids and big hair. It's like a crown. I just feel like I'm saying your hair important. If your hair messed up, you feel me? Brothers ain't gonna try to get at you. Uh, you ain't females gonna knock you. You feel me? Basically, you gotta have your hair tight. We express our beauty. In fact, the Bible speaks to us about our hair being a treasure. So it's just something we've always kept in our culture. But with that huge market, who controls it? Where does the money end up? Where do the billions go? I decided to try to find out here at the Black Hair Extravaganza. Follow the money. Thermal mix is for your heat style. Oh, you yeah. never use okay. it? It's like, it's it's like awesome. That. Step three, apply the thermal straightening bar. Section the hair into We think the uh, African American style is very big business. Almost every week they change the style for hair. Everybody wants to be a part of our market because we're the number one consumer. We spend 10 to 1 on anybody in here. In the retail market right now, majority of the retail stores are ran by Koreans. And more of the Korean stores that are ran by, the 90%, are supported 100% by black African money. It's so unfair, you know, that they take our money. But once again, part of it is our blame. We allow what happens. Is this true that the Koreans dominate the black hair industry? What you're looking at is one of the black beauty supply magazines that inform people who are interested in black hair products. All the ads and articles are about African Americans and their hair. And even though all the information is about blacks, half of this magazine is in Korean. And this magazine, Beauty Times, which is the number one publication for black beauty store owners, is written entirely in Korean. It's here, inside Beauty Times, that I spot Dr. Tony Leno, a black hair expert who writes a monthly column for this magazine, a column which not even he can read. I contact him and he invites me to Los Angeles to learn more about the Southern California black hair industry. Now where we are now, this is the uh, famous Crenshaw Corridor, where most of the, many of the elite black businesses are. And right here on the corner of 54th and Crenshaw, South Central Los Angeles, and this is beautiful wigs, this is the Korean owned uh, hair store, they, they sell hair of all kinds. In your store here, what, what percentage of your, of your business is Afro-American? Uh, about 100%. <laughs> 99.9. Okay. Nine, in other words, 99.9%. Nine, nine <laughs> okay. okay. And up here on these walls, right here, these racks, all the way around uh, are, are, are the hair that's used for, uh, for, for weaves and for extensions. Jenny Jackson, they come over here, pick it up in a virgin human hair. Bibika Fox. I saw it in several weeks, then I cut his style for her. Um, I've been knowing him a long time. Okay. Richard Price. Yeah, 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 that's Little Richard. Yeah, Little Richard. This city alone only had 10 beauty supply stores 20 years ago. Now there are, there are over 100 Korean-owned beauty supply stores. Oh, okay, you're looking at a typical beauty supply store, Korean-owned beauty supply store. But all these products have one common denominator. They are all aimed at the Afro community. One of the things that the Koreans are doing now, 
and they predicted this themselves uh, back in 1999, and it's happening now. Since they control 80% of the distribution of Afro hair care products, especially professional products that are sold in beauty supply stores only, it only stands to the reason they can control what gets distributed. They are creating their own line of products or buying out existing black-owned companies. I don't see a reversal of this at all. Uh, it's just getting deeper and deeper. With the Koreans controlling the retail and wholesale distribution, they are slowly making inroads into taking over the black manufacturers. We're going to Kazuri Products. They are a black-owned manufacturer of, uh, of hair care products, but specialize primarily in curling irons, pressing combs, and the stove heaters that you heat the irons up in. This is Lucky White, who owns Kazuri along with her husband. We have been in business for over 30 years, and we are a black company selling to black beauty supplies and also to black hairstylists, and we make a quality product. Everyone look at our product as being the best in the industry. However, since the Asians have been here, they are cutting us out, telling us that our product is not in demand any longer. The Korean connection. About three years ago, they started to blacklist our product as they brought their own products in. They started to manufacture curling irons and they duplicate everything that you manufacture. They would duplicate it and then they start to slowly cut back on orders and then they tell you that your product is not in demand. So they would make something that very similar that looked like ours and then they try and sell the consumer on this product. Can you show me some products from Kazuri? Kazuri? Kazuri products. This is Kazuri product. This. This is all Kazuri. This is an A1. So you have maybe three Kazuris and then the we rest. This Kazuri, this A1 product, this Stella. Stella. Yeah. Who makes three brands. Who makes Stella? Uh, you know they are B-sale, the wholesalers. And they make this this product. Actually, they make a copy, you know, for the other brand, you know, like oh. Kizuri, like uh, A, A Plus, but their, their uh, brands, you know, they are no good quality. Not good they, quality. No, just copy for the others. They are really trying to shut us out of the industry. They are telling you they will no longer distribute your product in these stores? They tell us that our product is not in demand any longer but that's just a excuse not to purchase our products. This is actually um, a tea bumper by Kazuri. I use it all the time. This is the place to be, a black hair salon in San Jose, California. Kazuri products are much in demand. We use them here. We have a setup here. We also have one here. We use their, their spritz as well. We use their whole lineup, so they are in high demand. We have to look at saving our community as well as saving this industry. We are a nation within this nation, and we're just giving everything away, and we cannot do that any longer. We have to stand up and fight. We are, we are beautiful black people. If we have to wear our hair short, so be it. Let's wear it short, but let's uh, get this under control where we control the industry and not let someone else come in and then set up and take all our revenue out of the community. But can Mrs. White and other black manufacturers fight back against this? New Star Beauty Supply, the largest wholesaler of black beauty supplies on the West Coast. New Star also manufactures their own products for sale to the ethnic market. Mr. Moon is manager of New Star. We are the number one biggest uh, the, the ethnic the distributor. In the West Coast? Yes. You guys are? Mm -hmm. We are trying to like one stop buy now. Like. We took them as being a friend and they, that, that they would not come in and try and take over the whole industry, but that's what they have done.